coming up. On this edition of The Solo Show, Stan welcomes returning guest host, Mission Commander Justin Clark from the Grand Circle Tour podcast. They're going to get a little bit weird, but not like that. They're actually doing a review of the movie Weird, the Al Yankovic story, streaming now on Roku. Stick around for this one. We've got some surprises for you. The Solo Show, as always, is brought to you by Victor Naraki Realtor, serving Disney and the greater Orlando area with CelebratingFlorida.com and Disney at your doorstep. Realtor Victor Naraki makes living near Walt Disney World a reality, specializing in all the communities surrounding Disney. Whether you're looking to relocate or invest in a new property, maybe you want a vacation home for your retirement. With over a decade of experience in the area, Victor will adapt to your needs, help you find the right property, or get you the best price for your property. Reach out to him today on his website, celebratingflorida.com, or at disneyatyourdoorstep.com. Follow him at Victor Naraki Realtor on Facebook, and don't forget to tell him that the Solo Show sent you. Okay, everyone, look, I am, I'm so excited about this, and, and Stan doesn't know about it just yet, so this is going to be a real surprise for him as well. I've composed a new theme for the Solo Show, and I'm just, I'm so thrilled to be able to premiere it here. But here's the best part. I have brought in the legendary Weird Al Yankovic to take a shot at recording this. So let's give this a whirl, shall we? Whenever you're ready. Okay, on my beat here. One, two, three. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Y you haven't quite got me yet. Let's take it from the top. Okay. Nope, nope, haven't quite got it yet. Okay, let's, yeah, one more time. Oh, um, okay, let's, uh, let's try again. One, two, three, four, five. No, 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 not quite there yet. Okay. Hold it, hold it. What? You just, you're not quite there yet. You've got it, you're getting close. From the top, please. No, 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 no. Yeah! Hold it, you're rushing it a bit, you're rushing. Don't don't rush it. You'll get it there, you'll get it there. No, not quite there, a little bit fast. Wait, wait for me, wait for me. Yeah, sure. You're dragging it just a little bit. Oh, come on! think you were out of tune there? Not really. I, I think I sound kind of awesome. I mean, if you don't like awesome, that's that's one thing, but yeah. I'm... You know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's better if we don't bother with this and I just throw to Stan. Hey, what are you? Hey, 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 get down! Here's Stan Solo. <sighs> Why are you still sitting there? Go wait in the green room. Sorry. Sorry. Hello and welcome to another edition of Solo Show. I am Stan Solo as always, and joining me today is my good friend and yours, Mr. Bishton Commander from the Grand Circle Tour Podcast, Justin Clark. How are you today, my friend? I am fantastic, Stan. How are you doing tonight? I am demented because we're talking Weird <laughs> Al and the Weird Al Yankovic movie called Weird, an Al Yankovic story. Uh, the first bit we're going to do spoiler free. Uh, we'll play the trailer and then we'll we'll go into spoilers. So if you haven't, stick stick around for the first bit at least if you haven't watched the movie yet. It came out November 4th. So if you're a Weird Al fan, you've probably seen it already. Justin, what's your history with Weird Al? Do you remember the first time you heard of Weird Al? You know, it's it's about like asking me when did I first learn about air? It just seems like it was part of my environment my entire life. Um, I would say it's pro it's probably back around the time of like Eat It and that that sort okay. of era is when I first started hearing him like on the radio and and maybe seeing him on MTV and things like that. Um, okay. Is when I would have first heard about him. Um, but yeah, I I I've loved like comedy albums and such my whole life, so that was such a natural fit for me to just become a fan of Weird Al. How about yeah. you? Well, 
Yeah, I'm a bit bit before that. Um, I used to listen to the Dr. Demento show religiously. Like that was like like my number one thing. And I think it was Saturday nights or it was Friday nights. I believe it was Saturday nights. It was on the radio. And I would actually have my tape recorder. I would record them so I could play them back throughout the week and listen to them. And Weird Al, Dr. Demento introduced Weird Al. And I remember listening to it. Of uh, He played Another One Rides the Bus. <laughs> that was the first Weird Al song I ever heard. And all my buddies at school, I know we were all geeks. And we went back, I got back to school. We all, did you hear that Weird Al song? Another one rides the bus. And we were all, we knew all the lyrics. Because, of course, I played it back like 15 times over the weekend. And and that was kind of the beginning of my, <laughs> my love for Weird I had a UHF movie poster, uh, a small one, a mini one. I think it was in a magazine or something. And it was actually on my locker from pretty much from grade 7 to grade 12. That was the only <laughs> poster I had on my locker <laughs> going, uh, going that to school. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, had, I, had, I took that poster down and next year i put it back up had a couple of magnets i stuck it to the to the locker door <laughs> but yeah <laughs> uh, that, that's a bit of a and and justin uh and i before we before uh before we were even or i was on the grand circle tour podcast i was kind of thinking about doing a podcast about parody music and justin was going to be my go-to guy i was gonna we were kind of talking a little bit about doing a parody podcast yeah i think the only reason we didn't is we we were worried about the the copyright implications and how to get all the licensing rights and and all of that kind of stuff that we really didn't know our our how to navigate through all of that so that was the only reason we didn't really exactly yeah because we didn't want to get you know sued by everybody saying well you can't and, and you really you can't you shouldn't be playing copyrighted music on a podcast so it's hard to do a podcast about music without playing music yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'd ha- you have to get the appropriate light rights and such and that's the licensing and all of that and like i say it's 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 a nightmare to go through from what i understand um yeah. you about need an entertainment lawyer on staff and we don't yeah. have one <laughs> yeah yeah and we, we, we weren't we weren't about to do that but the concept of the of the podcast that i had was that justin and i would each bring a song each week and try to make the other person laugh was kind of basically <laughs> the concept of the of the podcast that i had but anyways i i thought it would have been fun to be able to do that i wish we could do something like that but instead we're going to review the weird the all young oh oh hang on justin you see who's in the green room um yeah what what's up with security here at Streamyard? i this isn't the first time we've had someone pop in out of out of nowhere either i what's know what's going on is, do we let him in or what well i mean he's here i i, okay. I guess we do you probably hey, wait, hey let's welcome joe Yankovic. it's al remember not joe now what did i say you start acting silly and you don't get your cookie at the end of the show oh now calm down al you know how stan is with his names by the way we are both huge fans of yours oh that was just great thanks oh by the way isn't that the shirt i got you for christmas why yes yes it is oh it looks good on you and you know i'm still wearing that steel wool underwear you got me <laughs> okay you guys <laughs> enough about let's let's i want to get back on topic let's get the train back on the tracks let's talk about your new movie weird the al yankovic story where did the idea come from it, it came from uh, eric appel who directed this movie he, he directed the original funnier die video that this is based on which he did in 2010 so this is 12 years on the making wow. and, and the original video is basically is sort of like the you know where the whole thing sprang from uh, Aaron Paul started in the original version of me and Olivia Wilde played Madonna. That's right. but, but we thought yeah, at the time it was like, oh, this is a funny little video. And it went viral. And I, I'd play it in my live shows. And everybody's like, when's the movie coming out? And I'd say, it's just a gag. It's just a joke. Yeah, it's not a then real. after nine years of that, I said, maybe we should do a movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I, I love that. Um, and to have Daniel uh, Radcliffe, that was an interesting choice to uh, to have him portray you in the movie. Obviously, he's um, a great choice, but how did that come about? How did he uh, end up being your choice for the role? Uh, he was our number one choice. And, uh, yeah, I mean, even though Daniel, I think he even said on your show last night, he's not an exact physical doppelganger for me. There's not a huge physical resemblance there. But we just felt like he had the right energy, you know, and we thought maybe he'd go for it because famously after the Harry Potter series, he's chosen a lot of, I'm not going to say weird, but a lot of different, you know, kind yeah, of, he's I, played a flatulent corpse and a guy that grows horns out of his head. Like, yes. Maybe he can be a weird owl. Maybe that's not. And also, um, he's got the right energy and the right attitude and the chops. I mean, he does, he's great at comedy. He's great at drama, and we we wanted. Uh, it's obviously a comedy, but we wanted uh, it. We, we didn't we didn't want it to play like a comedy. We wanted no. it to play like a very serious, you know, uh, Oscar bait Hollywood biopic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's an Oscar-based biopic. Yeah, sure. Right on. Uh, L, you recently finished a world tour. 
and you ended doing in Carnegie Hall. Can you tell us a little bit about how that went? Well, I mean, you know, it's a six month tour ending at Carnegie Hall just this last Saturday night. And the whole six months, I'm a little nervous. You know, I'm kind of freaked out because, you know, Carnegie Hall, one of the most prestigious venues in the world and yeah. a bucket list item for me. So the whole six months, I'm like, oh, I gotta get ready for Carnegie Hall. Yeah. And we get next to the, you know, like a couple of days before, I'm just starting to freak out. And then the day of the show, I'm thinking, okay, I've just done 128 shows. It's just another show. Yeah. It's just another show. And then I get inside the building and I walk down the hall to the dressing room and there's giant pictures of, you know, Judy Garland and Frank Sinatra <laughs> and the Beatles. And my brain starts screaming, I don't belong here! <laughs> Oh my god! It went great. It went great. <laughs> That's, that sounds both exciting and terrifying. <laughs> oh. oh, I almost forgot. I know it's your favorite, so I made you a Twinkie Wiener sandwich. But before I give it to you, I just want you to answer me one simple question. What is the mathematical formula used to determine the area inside a pentadodecahedron? Um, what? Yeah, that's what I thought. You have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, Al. Uh, be nice. Be nice. Uh, oh, you don't get that cookie after the show. Okay, Al? Isn't this fun? All right. Time for you to entertain me. I want you to sing some bit bop music. Um, what? Oh, come on. We want bit bop music. Give us some bit bop music. Um, bit bop, bit bop, bit bop, bit bop, bop. <laughs> bit bop, bit bop. Oh. Um, you're from Canada. Is that why you write all those songs with funny sounding words? I mean, I've spent a lot of time in Canada, and I happen to know that they speak a language that is very similar to English, but uh, they throw in funny-sounding words now and then. Um, has, has that affected your songwriting at all? Well, I'm not exactly a songwriter. I mean, I did that one song with, with, with uh, Jeremy Goff. Uh, kind of a parody, but yeah, I, I, I don't know what words you're talking about. About! <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. That's great. Uh, give, give me another one. Hey, Al, I invite you into my house here and... <laughs> that's great! House! <laughs> you Canadians have a different word for everything. Okay, Al, that's, that, that's enough. I think it's time for you to leave now. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Okay, uh, thank you for joining us. That was Weird Al Yankovic. Cut his mic. Hey, what are you? Hey, 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 hey! hey, hey no! <laughs> I'm tired of people thinking I'm some kind of joke. Your dad and I agreed it would be best if you just stop being who you are and doing the things you love. My whole life, all I wanted... I'm afraid we found your son at a polka party. Just to make up new words to a song that already exists. Oh. Well, you should do that then. Who my, my little hungry one? Hungry one. Open up a package of my banana. Dude, I've got chills. Every once in a great while, I can spot a talent that I know is the future of music. But first, we gotta find you a stage name. Al Yankovic. It's long, it's hard to pronounce. So I'm just gonna throw this out there. Weird. Al Yankovic. I love it. Weird Al has taken the world by storm. Do I know you? Madonna, I was wondering if you were going to do a parody of my song, Like a Virgin. I'm curious, is that song autobiographical? Yes. <laughs> Except for the fact that I've had a lot of sex. Any one creative genius that doesn't have a checkered past involving alcohol. That's the medicine. Then drugs. I think Madonna's a bad influence on you. What? No offense. I'm a train wreck. My parents wrote me off. I pushed away my band. You're all just a bunch of normals. I'm the weird one. You gotta take care of yourself. I saw in you something special. An artist with something to give to the world. In front of all the billions of people watching around the world right now, all I want to say is be as weird as you want to be. Yeah! You will never find true happiness until yeah! you can truly accept who you are. Thank you. Al, you can't smoke in here.
I totally deserve that. And we're back. And thankfully, Al's gone. He was going a little bit nuts there at the end. That was a shock, though. What the heck? What's up with that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like being called Joe. <laughs> it turns out. You and your names. I don't know, Stan. <laughs> I know. I know. How can I just mix, get Joe and Al mixed up? Uh, who knows? Anyways, we're going to talk weird. The Al Yankovic story. Uh, it came out November 4th on Roku, free to stream. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, we're getting into spoilers now. So you can go back, listen to that first part and try to figure out how we did it. Or <laughs> you can listen to the rest of this. In show. fact, you can try to figure out why we did it. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's anyway. the more challenging part so <laughs> yeah yeah so uh i was super excited for the show i'm assuming you were as well just yeah i was i i really wanted to uh to see this i i knew kind of going in that it was not um going to be 100 percent accurate to uh weird Al's life but um <laughs> you, you have to overlook that in a biopic right i mean they they're all playing fast and loose with with reality at times some more than others like this one <laughs> yeah this one i mean they, they they tried to be as as true to his, to the his life experiences as they could get <laughs> <laughs> You can't even keep your face straight face during that part. Uh, it, know, done it, it, was, it was a well. lot of fun for me because as you know, as a fan of Weird Al, I've watched and and read about his life um in previous works. I mean, I, I have I have like one of his books. I have, you know, I've watched oh, what was it called? Like You Can't Go Home Again, and there was uh the complete L and um i think he did uh behind the music and so there's been all these different things out there about you know about his life and how how he came to be the uh the person that we know him as um so i knew a little bit i i could pick out what where where the kernels of truth were versus where they were kind of going a little exaggerated let's say <laughs> Well, I, I read the Mad Magazine uh, episode that he edited. Does that count for anything? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's about as much as I've read. But even then, I even still, I knew an awful lot. Surprisingly, though, there isn't a lot. Like, he's not in the public ever. Like, you never hear him getting in trouble or, you know, he's never in, you know, he, he's he's a huge megastar. He's, he's been, he has more hits than most other singers that he parodies. Uh, he, he, he don't hear about it. He doesn't swear. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. He doesn't do drugs. Never has has uh he's basically pretty squeaky clean as far as musicians go so oh, i absolutely. think that's part of the reason why he's not in the news ever and i love the part <laughs> in, the, in the trailer where he said or even in the movie where they talk about well which musician doesn't have a checkered past with drugs and alcohol <laughs> you know well and he's even made fun of that himself in the past and i think it was the um i think it was the behind the music where he's like i i don't have all of this sort of thing in my past what do you want from me people <laughs> yeah 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 exactly but anyways no you cheat but having watched the film like you mess messaged me or we were messaging back and forth i said what do you think and you kind of had an issue with the way his parents were portrayed yeah now especially the way they portrayed his dad as being so over the top abusive it was i i know i understand what they were going for i understand they were trying to be like i say kind of really over the top um really exaggerated it felt too real to me and in fact it was it was just it was disturbing enough to me to see that portrayal that i i actually had a hard time enjoying the rest of the movie after that mm -hmm. um and his parents from everything i have seen and read and heard him talk about um were just the sweetest kindest people um they were very, very supportive of them yeah and very supportive as i was going to say yeah um so yeah to to see them portrayed that way was just i mean it kind of hurt my soul a little bit because <laughs> they they were very nice people and they didn't deserve i i kind of felt like they didn't deserve to be shown that way and it was yeah. just it, it almost came across almost mean-spirited in the way that the dad in particular was portrayed as being so violent and so abusive yeah by beating the accordion salesman <laughs> like yeah the the uh and I, and I guess, especially because it's right at the beginning of the movie, you're kind of expecting, you're going into this, expecting this as a documentary almost. And then it's like, well, wait a minute. This isn't how I've ever heard of them. What's going on here? And it kind of throws you off guard right off the hop, maybe too. Yeah. And like, and like I say, I mean, that one, that particular portrayal, I think, I mean, 
the actor did a great job. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was almost too good for me. It was like, it was, it was yeah. too, it was too much for me. It almost triggered me in, 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 in that sort of sense. And so I had, I had trouble with the rest of the movie because of that. And, but at the same time, and it was a good movie and I, and I did enjoy a lot of it. I enjoyed being able to kind of pick out some of the bits that were, that, that, that were true versus, like I say, what, what was exaggerated. Yeah. Um, and his parents, I mean, his parents passed away years ago. It was like April 9th, 2004. Um, and interestingly, April 12th, 2004, Al was like in the middle of a tour and April 12th was then the next tour date. And it was in Grand Forks, North Dakota, of all places. Oh, wow. My friend and I were went to that concert. And, you know, so we had a couple of days. We weren't sure if he was even going to do that concert. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and famously, he did. He did decide to kind of continue with his tour and, and uh, keep going, even though his parents had just passed away suddenly like that. Um, so I was there. I was there at that first tour that he had after his parents had passed away. So that again, and and to hear him at that time even speaking about how much he 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 loved and cared for his parents. Yeah. Again, it's like was was part of what why I had such a negative reaction to it. You you seen Weird Al in concert a number of times. Uh, how many times have you seen him though? Oh, probably. At I would say at least five or six that wow. I that I can think of off the top of my head, okay. um, because I because there was that one that I was at um, Minnesota State Fair a couple of times. Um, there was the one time I did the VIP experience on the uh, mandatory fun tour. Um, we did the uh, uh, the last time the the self indulgent <laughs> tour. <laughs> Um, oh, and we saw the uh, the Strings Attached tour. Um, that was like down in Bismarck. We managed to go to that one. So, yeah, we've seen them several times. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them three times. Uh, twice was in the in the Winnipeg Arena, which is like where the Winnipeg Jets play. It's a large venue. It wasn't sold out. It wasn't sold out uh, event. There's a lot of empty seats still, but it was a great show. I absolutely loved it. And then the third time was in an old theater, which had small seats. And I had, I was, I had like fifth row or something. I was off to the side. I couldn't see the drummer because of the way the angle was. It was just, I did not enjoy <laughs> it. I did not have, it was not, not fun at all. And he's only well, played they, in that old theater since when he comes to Winnipeg. <laughs> so I didn't go the, like the last two times he's came because I didn't oh. want to get those crappy seats again. So <laughs> well, during but the anyway. strings attached tour, he had a part where he comes out into the audience and was, I will sing directly to a few select members of the audience as he's doing his song. I was one of the people he came over and sang to because I, I was in a very kind of central uh, seat in the back bleachers so he could come, kind of come right up to me. And See, my, that's not the one where he wears the like the leopard print or the that uh, is the uh, one yeah oh my gosh that's embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> didn't he usually go up to the women for that <laughs> and then and then he's like he's it's sure like up on the big screen was it was like it was up on the big screen and monica freaked out from being up on the big screen so much that she never got a picture of me with al <laughs> Because it, it usually sings to the women in the audience when he does that. Right. that. So he comes around and he, yeah, he does stuff. <laughs> okay, that? that's funny. Tacky. Yeah, it was tacky. No, did, was so so now you said it kind of turned you off for the rest of the movie, but you did enjoy the rest of the movie, I'm assuming. Like like once he starts going to college and he writes uh, My Bologna. Yeah, I, I was able to enjoy it. But like I say, it was that it, it kind of dampened my my enthusiasm mm -hmm. right off the so, bat. And when I rewatched it, I, I had a better time with it. Yeah. I don't think he was in college when he wrote his first started submitting tapes to Dr. Demento because I believe he was still in high school. Um, he wrote no, my Bologna. He record he was in college when he recorded my Bologna, but okay, he so that first. But his first song was uh, it was an original song. It wasn't even a parody. It was called Belvedere Cruising, and it was about riding around in his parents' car. So that was when he okay. that was the first song that he submitted to Dr. Demento. But um, when he was in college. He was working as like a DJ at the local radio station. He recorded My Bologna in a public re restroom, but it was yeah, there at part, the college. That, that part's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't, at, it wasn't at the bus station. It was right there at the college, um, like across across the hallway from the, 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 the radio station. Mm -hmm. um, the, the college now has a plaque by the door of that commemorating it. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, so, so, so that was, a, what was this? When did he submit another one rides the bus? That must have been one of the earlier ones, like a second or third. Or was my Bologna first? Uh, my Bologna, I think, was first. Another one rides the bus did come later. Um, because that was the first one I remember. There's, there's footage, and I think it's on, I think it's on a couple of the, the, 
the DVDs as well. There's footage of him from the Tom Snyder show singing Another One Rides the Bus. So it's him and his accordion and uh, John Bermuda Schwartz is in the background doing the percussion on the accordion case. Oh, cool. That's so cool. <laughs> now, uh, for me, I think the highlight of the movie is the, uh, well, of course, when Dr. Demento first, first uh, appears, and I like the My Bologna scene, but the grotto at the Dr. Demento's home, where every single, the biggest star of the, was it the 70s, the late 70s, early 80s is there. <laughs> Uh, Devo, Tom Petty, Elton John. Oh, it was, it was so much fun. They, they, yeah, so they apparently, I mean, they were trying to get every sort of weird-ish celebrity they could think of. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and have them all be there. And according to some guy on Reddit, I and I have not confirmed this, but apparently there's a pool party scene in the movie Boogie Nights that this scene is basically parodying and ripping off oh, okay. or yeah. making fun I could, of. I could totally see that for sure. Yeah. Andy Warhol's there. Uh, the girl from the B-52s. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Conan O'Brien was playing Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. um, Dolly was played by... Um, oh, I lost his name. <laughs> oh. Emo. Emo Phillips. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, Wolfman Jack uh, is kind of the villain in this because he's, he's not <laughs> really... <laughs> Uh, played by uh, Jack Black. Jack Black, yep. Yeah, uh, th uh, that whole scene—it's it, just like you got to pause it. And you got you, oh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, <laughs> is uh, one of the ones. <laughs> of course, these aren't the actual actors playing it; they have people portraying them. Right? They have they have they have other they have current actors portraying these other people. Like yeah. Paul F. Yeah. Tom Tompkins is um playing Gallagher. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Gallagher was there, right? Uh it's almost like a like like a like a Halloween party. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the level of costuming that they even went with, which was which which just kind of made it that much more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I wanted to talk about so so the um, another one rides or no the my Bologna scene when they're filming it and they were, they were uh, he's coming up with the idea initially on the counter there's a Captain Crunch and a and a Raisin Bran box. I noticed. And of course, later on in Eat It, that becomes the lines from Eat It. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cap yeah. There's Cap a lot of Crunch. little details like yeah. that, which are a lot of fun to notice. Yeah. So and I, if you I, notice, I, and it's, the always Weird Al, it's always Weird Al himself singing. Um, you right. know, Daniel Radcliffe obviously portrays the character, but even even in that, he's he's obviously lip syncing it. And it's Weird Al's voice that, that's coming out. And so this is yeah. part of the reason that Weird Al had to basically go back into the studio and re-record a bunch of this music that he has that he originally recorded years and years ago. <laughs> I, I didn't understand that. Why did he have to re-record re them? Like just in a different tone, or? Well, I mean, especially for things like that where it's in the movie, there's going to be it's like the timing is going to be a little different and things like that. It has okay. to match the timing and such of the movie. So that's that's part of the reason. Yeah. And then I think they they were also kind of redoing it to do a new soundtrack right yeah yeah now something i didn't know that was that eat it came out before beat it <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that i learned in this movie <laughs> right i mean who knew yeah I, and i absolutely love the fact that they show the eat it video mm -hmm. yeah because that video would make absolutely no sense in that context <laughs> <laughs> At a pool hall, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's honest. What is I, I like that he goes. He goes. Well, what is what is uh what is beat it about? What he's talking to is to the uh, one of the brothers. He goes. What is beat it about? He goes. He's. It's about a fight or stopping a fight or something. I don't know what it's about. <laughs> is it about eggs? What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's not about food at all. <laughs> I I did I did love his his total tirade against it. Who takes someone else's song and make and writes their own words to it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who does that? <laughs> and banging that phone against the counter <laughs> over again. <laughs> I I was just laughing hysterically uh, that that whole whole part. Um, I also I also love that Weird Al's cameo in in this is to be the record executive who turns him down. <laughs> yeah, and I liked how um, is it Will Ferrell that was playing the the brother Will Forte. Will Forte. Will Forte, Will Forte is just. <laughs> 
putting down poor Daniel Radcliffe portraying uh, Weird Al about you are so no talent. You can't write anything. You can't make your home music. You're ugly. You're, and they, and you and see, they, and you see know, Al back going, uh, honk. Oh, no. Yeah, no stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's not that bad. It's, <laughs> yeah. So many funny, funny, funny parts in this movie. I don't oh, know. And, I, and, I, and, and the scene where he, he's getting up on stage to sing I, I Love Rocky Road. And, you know, obviously you got the cliche of the microphone giving feedback and all of that. Pat Oswald is one of the punk rockers in the audience. And then all of a sudden, like his, his three roommates all come out and pick up, a, pick up their instruments and start playing. And he's like, you guys didn't tell me you could play. Well, it didn't seem relevant till now. <laughs> Another another line I really liked was when uh, oh let's we gotta talk about Madonna but with uh, while we're talking about lines was the um it had the breaking news when he gets arrested we interrupt <laughs> this presidential address with some breaking news <laughs> we're <Weird Al Yankees. laughs> <Get arrested. laughs> those type of little things I just in the background I just like oh my gosh that's so funny uh, let's talk a little bit about about Madonna in this because uh, in real life Al and Madonna they actually have met and it was at an award show um they were both backstage and it was about 45 seconds and that was about the extent of, the, of how much they've they, they met each other in person she's about 50 percent of the movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> now and interestingly um the, the the idea for like a surgeon did originally originate with madonna um mm-hmm. and the story goes that madonna had was talking was just kind of chatting with a friend and and kind of offhandedly said you know i wonder when weird al is going to um, make a parody of my song and call it like a surgeon so her friend happened to know like one of weird al's producers so she told weird al's producers hey you know here's this idea and that got back to al and he's like normally he doesn't like take ideas from someone else but he was like mulling it over after he heard it and went you know that's that's not bad it could work <laughs> so he went ahead with it but the idea did technically originate with madonna so that part again there's these little nuggets of truth behind this exaggeration in this movie yeah yeah exactly um and what's cool with being like like a super fan is that you kind of know what is and what isn't like what we're watching and quite often my wife will go did that really happen did that like like she said like like did did weird al and madonna date and like no no <laughs> they, 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 they never they never date they met each other for 45 seconds that was that was about it yeah so uh now, what about the scene in the diner? I, I I know that's from a movie. I was thinking Pulp Fiction, but that can't be it. Where he where Madonna gets kidnapped and they kind of they get into this fight with the with these with the cartel, I guess, and then the cook and, the, <laughs> and everybody else. Do you, do you, are you familiar with movie that's from? I'm not. I'm not sure which movie that was that was uh, parodying, but. Um... I have to say that that at about that point, even when I was like having trouble with the film up to that point, that was like when, when I went like, I'm all in now. <laughs> <laughs> to see him just go suddenly totally kung fu, <laughs> yeah. taking down the bad guys like like it's nothing. And I'm like, OK, I'm totally in on this movie now. <laughs> I like at the start of the fight, he says, he says, I only ask you one thing. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Please don't hurt her. <laughs> don't, don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was a, a whole a great scene. And then we get into this whole weird. Well, we got the drug scene where he where he uh, has LSD in the guacamole. <laughs> where else are you going to keep your LSD besides in the side of guacamole? Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was good. But the whole then he become Madonna uh, joins the cartel or the drug lords or whatever. Who is it? Uh, Jimmy Pablo Escobar. Yes, yes. So uh, yeah, that that kind of threw me already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is getting a little bit far fetched already. But uh, it was it was good. I, I, I like the whole thing. What do you what are your thoughts on that? No no truth to that part, right? Madonna was never in cahoots with the. the drug kings um you know i don't know as much about uh, madonna's life as weird al so i i can't i can neither confirm nor deny how involved she was with pablo escobar's empire <laughs> yeah she, she probably was you know as far as i know i mean it's certainly possible but um <laughs> no i the thing is is like at about that point it felt it almost felt like something out of uhf yes in fact i almost thought they 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 they, they 
missed an opportunity to to at some point say this that this film was uh made for the uhf station for u62 or something like coming up next on u62 would have been a great way to start this <laughs> i i felt the same way too uh that it really reminded me a lot of of the uh the old uhf movie and there was no mention at all about him doing the movie <laughs> it, throughout, throughout, that None i caught whatsoever. anyways yeah yeah that i caught anyways there might have been a spatula somewhere in the in, in the set dressing but you know <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, I thought I thought it was great. Um, I, I've <laughs> Justin and I were talking before the show. I said, "Well, I watched it once only so far, and then I started watching it, and something happened. I had to stop it, and I, then I started watching it again, and then something happened. I had to stop it. So I haven't. I've only <laughs> watched it like one and a half times. Yeah, <laughs> and you're, you're about the same. And, and way. Same thing. Same thing for me. It's like I watched it through the first time, and then I started watching it in order to like you know kind of start taking some notes and whatnot. And then you know life happened, and <laughs> I got busy and. Never got back to it. Yeah, yeah. So I got to watch it again. And I'm assuming Justin does as well. So it's sitting here half watched again. So, I have to it. <laughs> so yeah. So if you haven't watched it yet, uh, check it out. It's on uh, Roku streaming. It's, uh, and I don't know. I got like a Roku stick. So I automatically get Roku with that. I'm assuming you can download the app if you don't. Um, and I think you can, I think you can watch it on their website as well. Okay. Um, you can go to their w- website and get it there. So yeah, there's, there's several ways to get, get access to it. Um, yeah. And it's, it's available for free. So you shouldn't have to like, like sign up for anything yeah you get the odd commercial here and there but oh, whatever gives you a chance to go get up and work, get more pizza there you go <laughs> <laughs> well justin this is a lot of fun anything else you wanted to uh a touch on um i think we hit most of the things um yeah i i i just i did enjoy a lot of it because like i say i knew i knew where the moments of booth were and if you know Weird Al's life in particular, if you're a fan, enough of a fan to know that sort of stuff, you're really going to enjoy the exaggerations here and how far yeah. away from reality it gets by the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Radcliffe, did, I mean, he doesn't match Weird Al's look, size, or... <laughs> was, it, to me, it was a, it was a, a weird choice. Uh, you know, and, but yeah, speaking of the actors, I mean, Daniel, obviously he did a fantastic job. Um, he tells a story that to some extent he got the job in part because of an old appearance on the Graham Norton show where he sang the Tom Lehrer's The Elements song to the audience. So uh, Weird Al saw, apparently saw that and went, OK, this guy gets it. <laughs> oh, OK, OK. I was wondering. I didn't I didn't know about that. Yeah. So, so. check that out. It, that's one of those things that there's clips on YouTube. Go, go look up Daniel Radcliffe singing the Element song. It's it's a fun watch. Okay. Um, Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna was fantastic. I loved Rain Wilson as Dr. Demento. Again, he did mm-hmm. a great job. I mean, everyone in this just really knocked it out of the park, I thought. Yeah. Uh, I understand that some of the actors during the, the grotto, grotto scene wanted to be in the movie and they just paid their own flights and everything. They didn't even, <laughs> some of them were like, well, you're doing a weird, I got to be on that. And then they, they flew themselves down to California to be to be in the film. I'm assuming that's where it was filmed, wherever they were filming it. Wherever uh, they were filming it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, they they, uh, they wanted to get the, the bit part in. So some of the actors <laughs> were, were really excited about, about being on the, on the uh, movie. Yeah, just, just the opportunity to, yeah, just to be part of it they were, they were like all right let's what do you need me to do as it were <laughs> yeah l do you have anything to add shut up shut up shut up all right with that ken take it away if you have a brilliant idea for a future edition of the solo show and would like to take your turn in the guest host's chair then drop us an email at the solo show zero one at gmail.com tell us your idea for the show and we'll contact you about a date and a time for you to join us If you would just like to keep the conversation going or have a comment about a previous show, then visit us on Facebook at The Solo Show. All logos, sounds, and songs that are made by and for Disney and its affiliates are owned solely by the Disney Corporation and are not, nor are they intended to be, the ownership of The Solo Show podcast. We hope you'll join us for the next adventure on The Solo Show. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.